for tapes of end-time meetings, deliverance services, or Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, writes Post Office Box 21516, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Friday morning, May the 22nd, 1998. Memorial Weekend Teaching and Deliverance Camp Meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Dr. Bill No of Salina, Kansas, is the teacher of the morning. I think Dr. No wants you all to stand so he can pray, and we can pray with him. Okay? Praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Hallelujah Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Father. Lord Jesus, we just come before you this day now, Lord God. We come before you to open your word, Lord God. Lord, we just ask that your spirit come down and anoint the word, Lord God. Let your true rhema word go forth, Lord. Let it go down into the people's heart to touch them, Lord God. Oh, Lord Jesus, just anoint it. It goes forth now, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you and praise you. Thank you for all these people, Lord, who've come yes, so far Lord. to hear your word, Lord God, who've come so far and been so faithful, Lord. I thank you and I ask you to bless them yes, this morning, Lord. Lord. Just bless them, Lord. And Lord, we bind. We bind any of the enemy that would be here and try to confuse the people. We bind any spirits of confusion. We bind any spirits of slumber. Yes, we bind any spirits of sloppiness in the name of Jesus. Yes, and loose your spirit to come yes, forth, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Yes. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Today I want to talk to you about the keys to the kingdom of heaven. You know, the kingdom of heaven is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's what Romans 14 says. He says, The kingdom of God is not a matter of, of meat or drink, but it is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And when you can stand in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, you're standing in the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus said, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom. Let's open our, our Bible. We're going to, let's open our Bibles first to uh, Matthew 16. I hope everybody brought a Bible because we're going to look at a lot of Scripture today. I try not to teach anything that I don't have Scripture for. I've heard lots of people teach out of experience. Experience is very valuable. But if you don't have Scripture to back up your experience, you ought not teach it. Because you might be in error. You just might be in error. There's no way. You prove things by, by Scripture. You can't prove it by Scripture, then put it up on the shelf and ask God to show you the Scripture for it. Well, there's a Scripture for it if it's of God. Let's look at Matthew 16, 18. And here... Peter has just had the revelation that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And Jesus said to him in verse 17, Blessed are you, Simon Barger, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you, you are Peter. And on this rock, the revelation, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will have been loosed in heaven. And you notice now, if we go back and you read that in the old King James, he says, Whatever I give thee, I will give thee the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And whatever thou bind on this earth, will have been bound in heaven, and whatever thou loose on this earth will be loose. It's singular. It's not plural. The Greek makes a difference in the third person between singular and plural. Modern English just says you can be either one or can be many. But in the Greek, there are two different words. And the Old English there are two different words. But those are archaic terms now, and they are taken out of the Bible. 
But it's very important. There are some places where that, that differentiation is very important. For instance, tonight when he said Peter, he said, uh, he said, Satan has, he was talking to his disciples, he said, Satan has asked permission to sift you all as wheat. But Peter, I have prayed for thee, singular. And when you've turned, strengthen your brothers. That's what the Greek actually says. But I don't hear many preachers preach that. The ones that don't read the old King James don't preach that. They miss that revelation. He sifted not only Peter, but he sifted all of them. But he said, Peter, when you have turned, strengthen your brothers. Uh-huh. Well, let's go on. That's, that's an aside. I'm sorry. You get me going on that rabbit trail, I'll be there half an hour. Okay. And so, that is, the, that is singular. And let's look at... Uh, Let's look at an example of this. We'll go back to Matthew 12. And look at Matthew 12, 29. Or look back. It starts at uh, Jesus had just cast the Spirit out of a demon-possessed, blind, and mute man in verse 22. And the man spoke. And then the Pharisees said, It is by Beelzebub that he cast out demons. And Jesus said to them, he said, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house, or that's family, house there means family, divided against itself will not stand. For Satan, cast out Satan, he's divided against himself, and how will his kingdom stand? But if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by who do your sons cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, Luke says the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come unto you. Or how how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man? Then he will plunder his house. And so, you see, when you bind demons... The kingdom of God has come unto you. The keys to the kingdom of God is in your life is binding and loosening. It is one of the most important prayers that you will pray after you become saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and come into God's will is to bind the enemy in your life. Bind the spirit of lust that tempts you. When you're walking down the street and this lustful thought comes through your mind, you say, I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. Get out of him. And you know, two years ago, I was lying in my bed one morning and I woke up and I felt this weight on my chest. Before I woke up, I felt something like a, felt like 25 pounds was sitting on my chest. And I opened my eyes. And there was this big cobra coiled up, sitting on my chest, just waving back and forth. You know? I mean, he's just as real as just a coffee sitting over that. And I saw that thing, and you know what I did? I pulled a cover up over my head. <laughs> Tried to hide from it. <laughs> and that weight was still there. And God said to me in a very quiet, sweet little voice, said, you can bind it. Pull the cover back down, and he see, hissed at me, and I said, "I bind you in the name of Jesus." And a hand came out of some out and put a chain on that booger, oh, another one on this side, and three chains on him. And I said, "I bind you, get out of him." And something just took him and just swooshed him out of there. Amen. I said, "My goodness!" And I looked over at the door, and this big black wooden spider was a coming through the door. And I've always been afraid of. I always, when I was a little kid, I had a. Uh, I, was, I can remember it like it was yesterday. I was standing by the side of the clapboard house that we had. And you know the clapboard houses, when you come up against the door and they put the, the door casing down, there's a hole up under, that, under each one of those things where that clapboard comes. And, I, and spiders had gone up there and made their nest. And this butterfly came, this beautiful butterfly came and lit right in front of me. And this big old black hairy spider jumped out of one of those holes and round that butterfly up in a hole, and I screamed. It, it scared me, and I screamed, and fear came into me at that. A spirit of fear came into me then. And I would, if I saw a spider, man, I'd walk over around the block rather than get close to it. I mean, fear would come up, my chest would 
get tight, I'd get sweaty, and I got afraid of heights, and afraid of dark, and afraid of dogs. That was a spirit of fear. And Jesus delivered me from that. He delivered me from that when I got saved. That spirit of fear manifested itself in different in different ways, in anxiety attacks and so forth. But I remember God brought that back to me. But Jesus, 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 Jesus. Where was I going, Lord? Pray I know. But I had a point I wanted to make. <laughs> Praise you. Anyway, that black widow spider, and I, you know, that thing should have scared me, but I just looked at it. And said, so I bind you too. And then out of the diet, man, came this chain. Whoop, 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 and away he went, you know. And I got up, you know, and I said, now, Lord, what does all that mean? And I thought about it, and I was on my way down here the next day. And so I saw the Brother Coffee. Now, Brother Coffee, let me tell you about this strange thing happened to me evening. And so Brother Coffee came back. He said, I'll tell you what happened, Doc. You've been, you have been blessed. God has shown you in the Spirit what happens when you bind the enemy. And so I decided to do a, a study on it. And the word bind means to put in chains. That's what it means, to put in chains, to bind with chains. And when you bind these demonic forces, the Lord Jesus Christ sends His angels and He literally puts them in chains and hauls them off. I mean, He hauls them off in the Spirit. They won't bother you anymore. I mean, they gone to that black pit hole or wherever He drops them. They gone. You say, I bind you and say, haul them off, Lord, get rid of them. And then in, in, in Psalms 149, it says to bind. So you stand with the high praises of God in your mouth and a two-edged sword in your hand to bind their nobles and kings with fetters of iron. Praise you, Lord Jesus. And so you bind these things in the name of Jesus. Now, there's another verse on binding, and let's look at it. And it's in Matthew 18. And you look at it, it says pretty much the same thing. If you read it here, it says, verse 18, 18, Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And again, I say to you, if two of you agree, that word agree means harmonize. It's the Greek symphonize. It's from the word we get symphony. It means to come into a musical harmony, a spiritual harmony. It is not an intellectual agreement. It is an agreement within the spirit. It says, when two of you agree, any, agree concerning anything, and they ask for it, it we have done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are led together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Yeah. Now, that word led, is, some folks just translate it gathered, but Derek Prince said it could be very easily interpreted as to be led. And to be led means that you've got a leader, the Holy Spirit, that brings you in together. And brings you in harmony, in spiritual harmony. Now, if you can come into spiritual harmony and speak forth a prayer in the Spirit of God, it'll come to pass. It'll come to pass. If you can come together with two people and speak forth a prayer in the Spirit of God, yes, by the Spirit, by the Spirit it will come to pass. Because that's the same as God speaking to Himself. You're speaking the same thing that Jesus is speaking to the Father. And He's interceding for you. But if you look at this, if you go back up above that to verse 15, you'll find this is a different principle from the one we just covered in, in chapter 16. Chapter 16 was a singular person, singular person casting out demons. Okay. And binding evil forces affecting his life affecting the life of a fellow believer who's come to him for ministry. But here we see, there's more of your brother sins against you. Go and tell his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you've gained a brother. But if he will not hear you, take two or three more. And by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. Uh -huh. And if he refuses to, the, to hear the church, let him be like a heathen or a tax collector. For surely I say to you, whatever you, that is, that's plural now, that's plural you, ye, 
bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever ye loosed on earth will have been loosened in heaven. And so he's talking to the church there. He's not talking to single individuals. He's talking to the church. And he's saying that that church has got to come together in harmony. But there are two or three that will be led together and come together and bind the evil principalities over the church. It'll happen. You say, what do you mean talking about evil principalities over a church? Well, evil principalities over church. Let's look at uh, let's look over in Ephesians chapter six twelve and keep your finger here in Matthew. We may be back to that, but let's go over to Ephesians. Oh Jesus, I have bit off more than I can chew, Lord. I've only got an hour. Ah, uh, gird up the mind of the loins of your minds. We're gonna move ahead. Ephesians 6.12, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, rulers of darkness and evil, and spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Now, if you've got a later translation, it says high places, or an old King James says high places, but it's heavenly places. That word is translated heavenly five times in Ephesians. Amen. The, the original translation of King James could not believe that Satan could be in the heaven, but there are heavens. Yes. You remember Paul said, I was taken into the third heaven, the paradise of God. Well, if there are three heavens by logic, you have to realize there's a second heaven and a first heaven. Amen. Now, we look at Daniel 10. Let's go to Daniel 10, and you will see the principle Daniel here was... Daniel 10. Daniel here was praying. He says, in verse 2, In those days I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant food, no meat, no wine, came into my mouth, or I anoint myself, till three weeks were fulfilled. Now on the twenty-fourth day of the first month, I was beside the great river Tyre, that is the Titus, and he lifted up his eyes, and a heavenly messenger came to him. And we, that's a beautiful description of the heavenly messenger, but let's come on down here to... Uh, Verse 11, he said to me, Daniel, man, greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have been sent to you. In verse 12, he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I came because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. And then he goes on and he says, you've got to go back and fight the king of Persia, and the king of Greece is coming. Now, he wasn't talking about earthly kings. This is, this is Gabriel, the archangel, the messenger of God. But yet, as he came through the second heaven, these evil princes withstood him and delayed him for three weeks while Daniel was down there praying. And he had to get help to get through because they did not want Daniel. The devil didn't want Daniel to get the message. Now, that the princes of Persia were the evil principalities. Now, the word principality means a ruler and the area of his authority. And they are in the heavens, they're in the second heavens. That is the gates of hell that Jesus spoke of. Now remember that in the, in the Hebrew culture, the gate was the court. The gate was where all the business was transacted. The gate was where the elders sat. And when you went to the gate, you went to the elders. You went to the powers. Look in Daniel. You and Daniel. Turn to Daniel 1. Daniel 2, I'm sorry. Daniel 2, verse 49. And Daniel also petitioned the king, and he set Shadrach, somebody, and somebody else over the affairs of the providence of, of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. That's the king's court. If, you've got a, if you have a large King James, there's a little dot there, and over the corner it says the court. And that shall not, that is where the devil makes his plan. 
And he's divided up this country into areas. And to each area, he's assigned a ruler, spirit. And this ruler spirit has other spirits under him, and other spirits under him like an army. He got so many generals, so many, so many colonels, so many lieutenant colonels, so many majors, and all the way down to the buck privates. A lot of buck privates running around. Uh-huh. A lot of buck privates running around, and they are the ones that harass you, and they follow you around, and they report on you, and they, you know, the devil is an. You have to realize that the devil is a created entity. He can only be at one place at one time. The only way he can keep up with what's going on in the world is to have an army. He's got a highly organized, highly disciplined army that has his headquarters in the heavens. And up there, they are principalities. And Jesus said, your responsibility is to bind them. The church's responsibility is to have believers come together and bind the evil principality. There is a principality assigned to this campground. Its name is Jezebel. It causes dissension. It causes witchcraft. It's always seeking to foment trouble, to bring in people that would foment trouble. It's always seeking to cause problems. There are others, there are other spirits also. The one over hot springs is gaming and perversion. Its name is Gad, a destiny, a fortune. The one over Arkansas is witchcraft. The one over Kansas is pride in the land. Pride. The one over my hometown is greed. You ask me how I know all this? Revelation, word of knowledge, knowing the history. You look at the history. So all you got to do is look at the history. And you'll see what these people have served. Because they serve these gods. And these gods bring in and they make, they make unbelievers serve them. And they worship them. Jesus said, that which you worship, you will serve. He said, you shall worship the Lord your God, and Him only shall you serve. You worship something, you'll serve it. It'll put you in bondage and it'll hold you. Praise your Lord Jesus. Praise your name. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Let's look at uh, John 8. 34. The words of Jesus. John 8, 34 says, Jesus answered them, Most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. Now that word means slave. It comes, it's, uh, it's numbered to Strong's Concordance, it's 1401, but it's derived from a word 1201. And that word 1201 is the word bind. When you serve sin, the devil can bind you to sin. He can bind you in that area. Well, you want more scripture than that? Let's look at Second Peter 2.19. I'll let some people look at me sort of funny right now. Let's look at Peter, Second Peter 2.19. And it says, While they promised them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome by him, he is also brought into bondage or into slavery. Same word, slavery, bound. And so if you follow a false teacher, he can bind you and bring you into slavery. Let's look at Romans 6, 16. Do you not know to whom you present yourselves Servants to obey, you are that one servants whom you obey, whether of sin to death or obedience to righteousness. That word servants can be translated slave. 1401 came from the word bind. Derivative of the word bind. Praise your Lord Jesus. You have to realize that in this world, you're going to serve, you're going to be bound one way or another. You're going to be bound to God. Abigail said to David, she blessed him and said, May you be bound in the sling with the word of life. You're going to be bound to... Uh, let's look at uh, Matthew 12, 29. No, not that one. I'm sorry. Uh, where is it, Lord? Matthew 
Whosoever therefore shall break one of these, the least commandments, and shall teach other men that he shall be he shall be called the least of the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do them and teach them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. That word break there means to loose. That's the same word translated every place else as loose. When you loose, you teach people to loose themselves from the word of God, which means that you've been bound under the word of God. When you become a Christian and you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, then you're bound under the Word of God. Now, you can lose yourself from it. You have free will. You can either stay under it and you can... How do you know Him? Last night I told you there were three ways that you could know whether you knew the Lord. Number one, do you keep His commandments? It says in 1 John, By this you shall know Him, that you keep His commandments. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Praise you, Lord Jesus How do you know whether you abide in Him or not, and He abides in you? That you keep His commandments. And so, if you loose yourself from the Word of God, or teach others to be loose from the Word of God, you'll be called the least in the kingdom of God. That was just an aside. I'm sorry. Now, where does it say that the church can be bound? Well, let's look at Galatians 3, 4, 3, 4, 3, 4, 3, 4, 3. Even so, we were children in bondage under the elements of the world. Children under bondage to the elements of the world. Well, what are the elements? What do they mean when they say the elements of the world? Well, that was a word in the Greek to refer to to the earth, the wind, the fire, and the water, the four basic elements, and the gods that control them. And the powers that controlled them, they all had good Greek names. One of them's name was Syllabus, and the other was named Atticus, I think. I I don't have them written down, and I just don't remember now. But they were the gods that controlled the four basic elements. And on these, the whole Babylonian system was based. In different locations, they had different names. Control the fire, the water, the earth. And control fertility. But you remember, with no fire and no water, nothing grew. They also believed that the, that the planets and the astral powers that control the planets, and therefore they worshiped the God of heaven. And they were bound to it. They were bound to it. And religious spirits can come in and bind you to that. Let's look at Colossians 2.8 says, Beware, lest anyone cheat you. Now, if you've got a, a, a good King James, it has a little doubt in there, and it says, Either plunder you or take you captive through the philosophy and the empty deceit according to the traditions of men and the basic principles of the world. Now, that word basic principles is the same word as elements. It's the same Greek word. 4747 in Strong's Concordance. And it refers again to the astral powers, to the, to the Queen of Heaven, to the, to the, to the Zodiac, and all the other uh, systems that built up around it. And the church was in bondage, taken plunder. He said, would be taken captive by them, bound by them. And so you've got to bind those powers and loose the church from it. You've got to loose the church from witchcraft. You've got to loose the church from greed. You know, greed is a terrible thing. A very powerful spirit. Brother Pittman said he was dressed like a three in a three piece suit like a banker, looked like a banker. Didn't look menacing at all. Praise you, Lord Jesus. You know, in Jeremiah 47 and 45, 17, they talked about the Queen of Heaven. In 2 Kings 23, 5, they talked about the host of heaven, that the people stood on their, on their, on their tops of their houses and burned incense to her. Queen of Heaven, they made special cakes and poured out drink offerings to her. I could spend all day going through the very scriptures where they talk about the Queen of Heaven. 
And today there are some people who worship the Queen of Heaven. Praise you, Lord Jesus. And so, now we come to how can we buy? Let's look at Luke 13, 16. And now here we find the woman with the spirit of infirmity. And you all know the story. This lady was bent over and she was lying. This lady had bad scoliosis and she couldn't straighten up and she walked like this. And she'd been that way 18 years. And Jesus said, Sister, you're loose from your infirmity. Straighten up. And she straightened up. And the synagogue rulers got angry because it was a Sabbath. And he said he shouldn't have healed on the Sabbath. And Jesus said, you hypocrites, how many of you don't loosen your ox and lead them to water on Sunday? And now here's the verse I want you to see. So, so ought not this woman, verse 16, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound low for 18 years, be loosened, from this bond on the Sabbath. Now, that word bond there. Now, that is a little different from bind. That's a different, that's an adjective. And it means a cord, a ligament, or a cord. Satan had put a ligament around her and drew her up in a knot. That's what he'd done. And when, when you sin, when you yield to temptation, or when your parents have done it, and the curse comes down through your family line. The devil's got legal rights, and he's got cords on you that he can jerk you around. You know, he got you to do, he got the, the prince that's up here, has got this little thing, you know, and you're down there like this puppet. And you're jerking, and you don't know why. And those are, are cords. That's the basis of soul ties. Let's look at this on soul ties. Let's just drop back and keep your finger here in Luke, and let's go back to Numbers chapter 30, verse 2. If a man vows a vow to God or swears an oath to bind himself by some agreement, see, not only can you, you make a vow to God, this is an agreement that you're making with men. He shall, and he bind himself. Now, the old King James says, bind his soul. New King James takes that out. But if you bind your nepha, your soul, by some agreement, he shall not break his word. He shall do all, shall do according to all that proceeds out of his mouth. And then it goes on and it talks about a other thing. But when you make an agreement, strike a pledge. Shake hands on it. Sign your name. Give your seal. You have bound your soul. Why do you think it says the borrower is the slave of the lender? Same word. Got that cord on you. He can jerk you around. You make some type of foolish agreement, that person's got a bond on you that can hold you. Now, Jesus Christ can cut you loose. Thank God there's salvation in Jesus Christ. He can cut you loose in the spiritual realm. Sometimes there are financial penalties you have to pay. Just like if you boost the, the, the grocery store down here and get put in jail and get saved, Jesus Christ will forgive you the sin of boosting that grocery store. He'll forgive you. He'll wipe it out. But you know the judge down at the court, he still might require you to go to jail. He still might send you to prison. You still might have a penalty to pay to society. I used to work in a jail ministry, and we had a lot of people who would, convicts would call it, uh, the men would call it taking a dive. They would, quote, get saved and straighten their life up. Boy, they'd come to Bible study, and they'd read, and they'd quote. But then they'd find out the judge was, was going to put them in jail anyway. They just quit. They all was the use. That's the way God's going to be. He's not going to deliver me out of this mess, and I won't with him. But they just took a dive. They didn't meet Jesus. They work in the system. I had a brother who, man, he could tell the difference. I, you know, I, I would pray, and I, they, and, and, but he could tell the difference. He said he's just taking a dive. That he is not. Said he's just trying. I said, well, I'm, I'm gonna believe for him. Okay, you go ahead. He said, you believe for him. So you be the good guy, and I'll be the bad guy. And we'll see who's right. Praise the Lord. 
We had some wonderful people that really got their lives changed and changed around and got saved. And some of them got the judge gave them probation. Some of them went to jail, came back three years later and told us, you know, and thanked us. And, and they had a ministry at the jail, and, and they're leading good lives now. I mean, there was some real fruit from that ministry. But a lot of disappointment, and could make you bitter. It could make you bitter and burn you out. But praise God, you got to love. You know, you got to love those people, even the ones that are taking a dive. Jesus said that by this you will know that you know me. Do you love one another? You can't hate not one brother. Right. Not one brother. You can't hate not one brother. You got to love them all. Even those that spitefully use you and abuse you and, and terribly misuse you. You have to love them and pray for them and ask God to bless them. Because, you know, He loves them. He loves them. And He will cry when they drop into the pit, though. He'll cry when they drop into the pit. Jesus will cry. He loves them all. But I'll tell you, He's a righteous God, too. He's a loving God, but He's a righteous God. He will not. His throne is based on truth and righteousness. The basis of His throne is truth and righteousness. And He, and He's a righteous God. He's a righteous God. Oh, God, thank you, Lord. Well, and so you can bind your soul. And when you yield to temptation, though, to pornography, to lust, to witchcraft, or to greed, those things can come into you. And they can bind you. And the devil, I believe that the devil can use that to attack you later. He didn't always attack you right then. He'll wait for a more opportune time. He stores it up in his bank account. And he waits. You know, he told Jesus he would. He deserted for him to await a more opportune time. It says in Luke, he left him to come back at a more opportune time. And Jesus said when the devil came, he said... The devil comes, but he's got nothing in me. He doesn't have any strings to pull on me. I wish I could say that he has nothing in me. Oh, God, let me come to the point that I can say he has nothing in me. Yes. Anybody who says that they don't sin is a liar. Truth is not in them. That's what First John says. Praise you, Lord Jesus. The desire to be rich. First Timothy 6, 9. Let's read that. I read that every, every every time I think about money. I, I go by, turn around and read this. The desire to be rich. And I think about these people with the prosperity gospel. And I weep for them. For those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and snare, and to any and to many fool, foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Watch me, he said that's one of the sure roads to hell, is the desire to be rich. I remember I wrote a, I read a, read one of his papers once on seven roads to, seven sure roads to hell, and the first one was the desire to be rich. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, of which some have strayed from the faith and their greediness and been pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But you, old man of God, flee from such things. Run away from it. He tells you to flee from that just like you flee from idolatry and flee from fornication. And what do you lose? I think you need to come together as a prayer group in your church every day and bind the spirits, the tormenting spirits, the principality over your church. Now, most people say if you bind him once, you don't have to bind him again. That's not true for the principalities in the heavens. That's not true. There is a time when they will be loose from their position and brought down. You can, if you look at Exodus 23, 25, God says, I will bless your food and your water. I will take sickness from among you. I will cause you... To fulfill the number of your days, that's to live, live your lifespan, not die prematurely. I will cause your enemies to flee in confusion. Now drive out the Canaanite, that's, that's rejection, the Hivite, that's pride, and the Hittite, that's terror. And I'll send my hornets to drive them out. But he says he will cause your enemies to flee in confusion. 
And that's what you want. You want the demons around you, the demons around your church, around your body, the demons around the President of the United States to flee in confusion. You want them to have confusion, to wander around in confusion and not be able to, to report back upstairs what's going on. And so you speak confusion to them. Say, I bind them and speak confusion according to Exodus 23, 25. That they're all going to be in confusion. They're going to wander around and not know what they're doing like if they get at the Tower of Babel. And you do it every day. Because in the Spirit, when you're dealing with principalities, things are done on a daily basis. God said, give us this day our daily bread. Ephesians says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. That's right. Things are done on a daily basis, and you keep binding every day. You come together with your prayer partners every day, and you bind the evil principalities over your church and over your pastor, and you pray for him. And that regardless of his faults, and you don't stand and mention his faults to God, the devil's already doing that much more effectively than you'll ever be able to. You know you won't ever be able to criticize somebody as good as the devil? He's had 2,000 years, and he's standing there day and night accusing that man before Jesus. And Jesus don't want to hear you accusing him. What he wants to hear you is thanking God for him and blessing him. It says, bless, do not curse. Pray for those that have... And so when you pray for your church, you pray for those in authority. You know, let's look at 1 Timothy. Let's look back at, at the 1 Timothy chapter 2. Therefore, I exhort you, first of all, that prayers, supplications, intercessions, and the giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all authority, that we might lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and reverence or dignity. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires that all men be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. For well, there's one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. I mean, people, you should stand and pray for the President of the United States every day. And for all the people that, that, that God has raised up. You know, uh, Romans 13 says, all authority emanates from the throne of God. Back when uh, President Clinton was running for the first time, six years ago, and we were praying and praying about the election, and we had been stood in prayer, and we fasted and we prayed. And the night before the election, I remember the pastor and his wife asked me, what's going to happen to And I said, I don't know what's going to happen. And so I went home, and I prayed, and I prayed, and God spoke to me, and he says, the country's going to get what it deserves. And I said, oh, God, don't do that to us. Give us grace, Lord. Oh, don't do that to us. Give us grace, Lord. Don't give us what we deserve. Well, we got what we deserved. That's what we got. We got what we deserved. And I just say, God, bless those people that you've raised up, Lord God. Bless them and bring them to salvation to know you. And I, th- and I try to bless those. I try to think of every good thing I can say about them. And I have not yet let one, five, one evil word against those people come out of my mouth. But just blessings. And God will bless them and bring them something. Think what it would be like if our president, the Congress, and the Supreme Court all got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, what would happen in this nation? I mean, you know, what would happen? We'd have a national revival. That's what would happen. I mean, God. Oh, I, you know, I just, it just, it just, it just, it just, oh, Lord. Let it happen, Lord. Let it happen. And so you pray for the president, and you pray for your pastor, and you thank God for him, and you think of every good thing you can to say about him, and you ask God to bless him. And don't do the devil's work telling God his faults. And you pray for the council, and you pray for the body in the church, and you pray for your family, for the conditions of all men, for kings and all in authority. And the first thing you do is you pray. And then you bind the evil principalities over the church. And you bind the evil principalities over your family. You look back at your family. And you see what's affecting your family. What the problems are. And you bind those principalities. And you release salvation, supplication, and grace on your children. And you release the kingdom of God. Righteousness. Shalom. That's peace, health, wholeness, prosperity, and serenity. That's what that means. 
And you let Jesus say he, he himself is our peace. He said, I came that I might that you might have peace. I came to give you my peace. He said, All those things. Claim it for your family. Bind it to them. Bind your children's feet to the paths of righteousness. Bind the enemy. Bind the lust that's in the school. My gosh, you can't cut the television and sit on that lust doesn't jump out at you. I don't even own one of those things. Movie theaters. You can't go to a movie. I hadn't been to one in years. I went to one with my family three years ago and I had to get up and walk out. But I'd sit in the lobby. It so offended me. Now, if you sit there and you like it, you've got to say, God, what is wrong with me that I like this? That's patently against your word. What have I got in me that is causing me to like this? Have I no fear of God in me? For fear of God is to hate evil, to flee from it, to give me the fear of the Lord. You bind the fear of the Lord to your family. Loosen them from the world system in the name of Jesus. I can sit here and talk all day, but it's... Hallelujah. Praise you and bless you and glorify you, Lord God. You say, when are those principalities going to come down? Let's look at uh, 2 Peter 3. 2 Peter 3.10. Let's start with verse 9. The Lord is not slack in turning His promise. Let's start verse 8. But, beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is a day. For the day of the Lord could be a thousand years long. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering with us, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. God loves all those sinners, and he would, he, he, it's His will that they should all come to repentance. Now, He won't put a hook in any of them's nose and drag them in, but He will offer them the spirit of repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with great noise. The elements will melt with fervent heat, and both the earth and the works in it will be burned up. Verse, Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought we to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking and hastening for the coming of the day of the Lord? because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Now, go back to verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements... Now, that elements, that's that word that we talked about in Colossians. Those, those evil powers that have brought you into bondage. Those princes in the heavens shall melt. Now, that word there is loose. That's that same word we talk about, loosen. They shall loosen because the heavens are on fire with fear and heat, and the earth and all the works in it shall be burned up. Now, look at verse 12. Looking and hastening for the coming of the day of the Lord, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be loosed or dissolved, and the elements shall melt in fear and heat. Well, what, where is that fire coming from? That fire is a fire spoken of in Matthew twenty-five forty-one, where he says, The everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. I say to you that, you know, John, 1 John 3, 8, which says that, that Jesus Christ came to destroy the works of the devil, that work destroy then means loose. He loosed them from their place in the heavens and dropped them in to the pit, and they all burned up. That is the day that you won't have to bind the principalities in heavens anymore. When the third heaven catches on fire, the great fire of God purges out, purges all the demonic forces out of the, the second heaven, and they melt in the fervent heat, and He drops them in to the pit of fire. That is the day that you won't have to bind them anymore. But you're going to have to bind them until then because they overcame Him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And they were heard no more in heaven. And so you've got to bind them up unto that day. But that day 
the heat, they go drop down into the pit. You got to bind them until that day. Now, Brother Tommy may have a little different way of looking at it. I don't know, but that, that's the way God showed it to me. And if they're going to be loose from their position up there, they are fixed there now. They're going to be loose. God's going to loose them, and He's going to melt them and drop them into the pit. That's what the Word of God says. So you can bind those. You have to bind. You have to stand. It is the duty of the church to stand and bind them every day. The keys to the kingdom of heaven, to coming in to righteousness, peace, and joy, and the Holy Ghost in your life, stand as you bind the enemy and loosen the powers of God in your life and the lives of your loved ones, and the lives of the people that God has placed authority over you. Now, if you don't do this, then you're going to be bound, and Satan's going to have strength, and he's going to pull you, jerk you around, jerk around your loved ones. I don't say you're not going to come under attack. There was a great Chinese... Christian named Watchman Nee. And Watchman said that you can't stop the birds from flying over your head. And that's the thoughts of the devil. That's the devil. He will be, temptations will be flying by you all the time. You can't stop the bird. But you don't have to let them birds make a nest in your head. Amen. And so when one of them flies by, you say, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I bind you in the name of you. Really, the devil's only got a, a finite number. He doesn't have an indefinite number of demons. He only got a finite You keep binding him, you know. You keep binding him and 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 binding him. You know, he's going he gonna to get tired of attacking you that way. And he's going to come hit you with another method. Now, you've got to understand that the wiles, we are ignorant of the wiles of the devil. That means his methods. That comes from the Greek word methodius which means methods. The devil's got a certain amount of methods that he attacks you. He's got a certain number of, of attack plans. And, and that one don't work. He pull us, he's filed us and back over him. Man, I lost, I lost a thousand demons here on this one. He said, let's try this one on him. Because he can't read your mind. He can watch what you do. He can watch what you do. And, and they can figure out what you're going to do from your past patterns. But they can't read your mind. Solomon... And he says, says, only God knows the intent of the heart. He said, you and you alone. That's in Second Chronicles if you all want to read it. You and you alone know the hearts of men. Solomon, the devil can't read your mind. He's like you to think he can. That's the reason you, you don't have to tell him everything. When he comes out of your mouth, he hears you. The demons hear you, and then they report it upstairs. But you need to compare confusion to them every day. So they wander around confused and can't get to the telephone. Praise you, Lord Jesus. But you need to bind and loose. You need to bind them every day. And you need to come together with a prayer partner. Now, a man and his wife and the Spirit is the most effective unit for their family in the universe. Because they're one flesh. They come into a unity in the Spirit. The devil hates it. Man, he'll do so many things to keep you from praying with your wife. Man, he will cause the phone to ring. He will cause that... He will do anything to keep you from praying for your wife or you're praying with your husband and coming together in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Man, he'll make you, he'll, 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 he'll do something to irritate your husband. Make your husband mad. Make your husband say something going to irritate you. He'll make the coffee pot boil over. He'll make the oatmeal burn. I mean, he'll do all kinds of things. Dirty tricks. Keep you from praying with your mate. But you ought to say, devil, you're not going to do that. We're going to bind you. And as you bind him, you know, he keeps losing demons, and he's going to try to pull out, he'd get another plan here. What can we do now? So he's going, to keep, he's going to keep attacking you, but you need to stand against him. And as you stand, and as you stand, and as you stand, you will defeat him. You will come out victorious. You know, I read the last chapter in the book and said, we win. He said, we win. That's right. And we will come out victorious. And you will lead a life of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You don't have to die of cancer. You don't have to die of arthritis. You don't have to die in the nursing home with Alzheimer's. 
Right there, He'll fulfill the number of your days. You need to bind those things and move forward. And you live a long and peaceful life and go, and go to sleep peacefully at night and go to heaven. God can come and take you peacefully to heaven. Bind them daily. I bind all day long. I just, I, I just bind and bind and bind. I'm, you know, I was, uh, I was gardening Saturday. I didn't do, I don't do a lot of gardening. But I had some volunteer, man built his house before to, that planted a bunch of big thorn bushes around my house. And all the one that's got these bushes with great big thorns sticking out open. That's some volunteer, uh, cedar trees got under there and, I was down, had a heavy coat on up under there, trying to trying to chop those cedar trees out and not have the thorns eat me alive. And I worked in there for a couple of I don't do that kind of thing very often. And I got out in my hand, and I worked on my, went up and I started posting on my computer. It felt like I had a toothache right here. Man, it hurt. Oh, man, it hurt. So I was going down to the hospital and it stuck in my arm like this, you know, and and I wasn't using it. It was just hurting, and I was trying to do my car, and, and i take it down and try to write with it. And I couldn't even read my own writing. I had the nurses transcribing for me. <laughs> so I got out of the doctor's lounge. He's a good friend of mine. He's a good Christian man. He's an orthopedist, you know. And I said, I said, what do you think of this? And he examined my hand. He said, man, that's bad. Oh, so, yeah, you got a cyst in here. And you bled into that cyst. It hurt bad. I said, it's throbbing like a toothache. He said, you bleed into that cyst. And he said, you're going to have to immobilize this thing and wear a splint up to him for two weeks. And then you're going to have to put ice on it. And you're going to take all this medicine i got to give you him. And if you don't get better, we're going to have to operate on it. And I said, man, I reject all that in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I said, what do I do with that? <laughs> no, thank you. Put my hand. He said, well, let me, let me at least give you the splint, Bill. So he put this splint on me to rest it. And I got home, you know, and I took it off and I iced it down. And I put that splint back on and wore it a couple hours. And it's still throbbing like all that. I said, the Lord, what is going on? And I began to seek the Lord. And the Lord brought to my mind that that morning I had had prayer with a with my prayer partner. And he had asked me about something ten years ago, what had happened, why I had done something. And you know I dug that dead carcass up and I drug it out there, that stinking thing out there, and I said, see how they shafted me. See what they did to me. And I just, man, I just, all the stuff I put on the blood, I just drug it out there and just, and, and I had to get on the phone and call that man and apologize to him and tell him, I'm sorry, please. Oh, God, don't ever... I said, I'm sorry. I should have never brought that up. And then I got to thinking about, you know, last year I loaned my, 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 my van and my trailer to the church. And they gave it to you know, and there was a... And they had it down at camp. And, and some things happened, you know, and it was expensive and... and Somehow or other, I got offended. I took offense over it. And I shivered in me for a year, and the pastor said something to me, and I just, I told him about it. I just laid it all out for him, you know. I just told him about it. And I had to call a man, poor man, and apologize. I said, oh, poor man, he was just, you know, he thunderstruck. He said, you know, but, and his mind had been all the other things when I told him about it the first time, and he did, you know, and I took offense to the fact that he didn't immediately offer to do something, you know, and just jump right in there like he didn't have anything else to do. Right in the middle of camp time and so forth. And I, you know, I was, I had to confess it as sin and ask his forgiveness. And then I went out and I stood up before the congregation and I confessed the sin of gossiping and tail bearing and asked them to forgive me. You know, you meant to make your confession as wide as your ministry. You get into sin, you need to make your confession as wide as your ministry. And I got up and I asked all these people who might teach to forgive me. And then I asked them to pray for my hand. Pastor anointed me with oil. He prayed for me. Next morning, God healed it. He bound the illness in it. Bound up the tail bearing. Broke the curses. Set me free. Tell you what, Captain, folks, if you... And the devil did that to me. You know, he just prompted that man to ask me that. And I tell you, I learned a valuable lesson out of it. 
I'm not dragging up the past anymore. There's that that what's been dead and gone and put on the blood is gone and forgotten. Jesus has forgotten about it, and I want to too. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. We just thank you, Lord. Y'all all been sitting there for about two hours. Why don't y'all all stand up? Let's praise God a little bit. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. Praise and bless and glorify you, Lord God. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. Jump up and down a little bit and get the blood operating out of your feet and your legs back up to your brain. It's said that, you, that the brain can only absorb what the fanny can endure. Get your, get your blood moving again. Praise you and bless your Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you and we praise you and we bless you for it, Lord God. Oh, Jesus, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory. Glory, Lord. Praise you. All y'all to sit down now, and I'm going to lead you into some prayer. God told me 15 years ago that he didn't want me just giving religious lectures. He said, when, I, when you get through teaching, I want you to give opportunity to people to get free. Now, this day we're going to bind the enemy, and we're going to bind the, the enemy that would stop you from, from binding and loosening, stop you from praying and touching you. Praise you, Lord God. Would you all join me in a prayer, please? Would you all pray after me? Dear Lord, Dear Lord I love you. I, love you. I, believe, I believe Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Is the, is the Son of God. He was manifested in the flesh. He, in the flesh. he died on the cross, on the cross. For, my for my sins, was dead and buried, dead and buried. Rose, from rose from the dead on the third day, the third day. Ascended, into ascended into heaven for my justification, for my justification. sits on the right hand of the Father, Ever to make intercession for me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are my Savior, my Redeemer, kinsman. God is my Father. Jesus is my big brother. I am a child of God. My membership is in heaven. I am an ambassador of the Most High God. I bind, I bind all the powers of the enemy, of the enemy over, my family. over my family. I repent, I repent of, the of the sins of my forefathers. I break, I break any, curses any curses that have come down through the family line. Family line. I, bind I bind any principalities, any, principalities, any powers, any mounds of authority. Any demons that have been assigned to my family line, I do reject them. I loose them from their assignment, and I bind them and ask the Lord to haul them away. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus, I confess there are certain people that I have not loved, that I have rather resented. Lord Jesus, I forgive them. I ask you to bless them and touch them, Lord Jesus. Set me free, Lord, of bitterness, of witchcraft, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus, Set me free from all the powers of the accord. In the name of Jesus, I break in, I repent of any sins of the occult, of calling on strange gods, foreign gods, instead of Jesus. I confess it is sin. I ask forgiveness. Under the blood of Jesus Christ. And I break the curse. According to Galatians 3.16. 
Now thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Now all you spirits of rejection, I just bind you in the name of Jesus. These are not rejected people. These are these are the children of God. For in Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin. They're all redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I bind the spirit of rejection in the name of Jesus. Turn on this rejection. All rejection. Rejection by mother, by father, by boyfriend, by peers, by bosses in the name of Jesus. By the church. I bind rejection in the name of Jesus. All spirits of rejection, I just bind you in the name of Jesus. Turn God's people loose. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I bind all spirits of fear. Fear of not being loved. Fear of not being wanted. Fear of not being cared for. I bind all fear. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear of not being good enough. I just bind you and command you to come out. Leave God's people now. All fear be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. All fear, fear, fear of not being good enough, fear of not being loved, fear of not being wanted, fear of not having enough money in the name of Jesus, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Fear of not being saved, I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear of losing control, I bind you and I command you to be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. I just bind all fear in the name of Jesus. Bind all spirits of perfection, perfection. I bind all perfectionistic spirits in the name of Jesus. All perfection, retaliation, anger, and rage in the name of Jesus. I bind you. Fear not being good enough. Come out in the name of Jesus. I bind all rebellion. Rebellion against God. Rebellion against neighbors. Rebellion against their family. Rebellion against the powers. I bind all rebellion. For rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. And I bind witchcraft in the name of Jesus. Attempt to control other people. I bind the spirits of witchcraft in Jezebel. And I command them to be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. Go! Go now. I bind all bitterness in the name of Jesus. All spirits of bitterness. I bind you and command you to leave in the name of Jesus. Now loose God's people from bitterness. As Moses put the stick in the pool of the mouth, I bind bitterness. I bind the root of bitterness in the name of Jesus. Make that, make that bitter pool sweet now, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. Touch the bitter pool, Lord God. Touch the bitter pool, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord. I bind the unteachable spirits. I bind the spirits of deception and unteachableness and stubbornness in the name of Jesus. I bind the spirits of schizophrenia and paranoia and double-mindedness in the name of Jesus and bipolar in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind them all and command them to be gone. I break the I break the authority of Jesus Christ. I break the authority of the enemy in these people's lives. And I command it all to be gone in the name of Jesus. Go, go, go in the name of Jesus Christ. All of you, get out of here. Go in the name of Jesus. All fear, all lust, all the spirits of lust in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind the lust in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind the lust in the name of Jesus. Go. Lust for money. Lust for power. Lust for position. Lust for sex. In the name of Jesus. I bind you and I command you to go. Now, most people won't cough when we bind lust because they're afraid of what people say. And I want all of you to take a deep breath and let it out. Everybody cough now. Come on, all of you. Everybody. Come on. Praise the Lord. Come out, lust in the name of Jesus Christ. All lust be gone. Go, lost in the name of Jesus Christ. Go, go. Desire for manna. Go, desire for things. Go. For the kingdom of God is not the matter of, of things in this world, but of righteousness, peace, and joy. Go, go, go. In the name of Jesus. I bind you and command you to be gone. In the name of Jesus Christ. I bind all the spirits of infirmity. In the name of Jesus. All the infirmity spirits, all the headaches in the name of Jesus, all spirits of migraine headaches, go. All spirits of sinusitis, go. All spirits of hay fever and allergies, go. All allergies, I bind you and I break the curse that gives you the right to be there. And I bind you in the name of Jesus. All food allergies, all pollen allergies, all dog and cat allergies, all dust allergies, go. All asthma, asthma and hay fever. Colitis in the name of Jesus. Go! 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 Be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. Get out of here! All spirits of cancer, I bind cancer in the name of Jesus. All spirits of cystitis, vaginitis, prostitis, urethitis in the name of Jesus. Go! 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 All spirits of colitis, go! All spirits of arthritis, go! All spirits of myositis, go! In the name of Jesus Christ. All infirmity spirits. 
All headache spirits. All high blood pressure spirits. Go. All heart attacks. Go. All strokes. Go. We bind you. Go. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. Be out. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind every one of you. Out in the name of Jesus Christ. Go out. All of you. Out. 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 All spirits of fornication. I bind fornication and pornography and command it to go. Hold your sex. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. You hear me? Demons, I bind you. I break your authority in their lives. I loosen upon you fire and destruction, demons, in the name of Jesus Christ. I loosen the spirits of fire and destruction on the whoredom spirits in this place. Go. 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 In the name of Jesus. Go. All spirits of perversion, perverse spirits, go. All spirits of the peeping time or the exhibitionists, go. In the name of Jesus, go. Go. All the flash of spirits, go. Praise you, Lord God. All spirits of blasphemy, go. All spirits of foul mouth, go. I bind foul mouth cursing and blasphemy in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind the tale telling spirit. I bind the spirit of lying, lying spirits. Go. In the name of Jesus, I bind all the tale telling spirits, all the joking spirits, all the coarse joke spirits. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. Go. That's not fitting for God's people. Go in the name of Jesus. We bind all of you. Every bit of you. Go in the name of Jesus. Go. In the name of Jesus Christ. I bind the spirit of barrenness now. Lord, you said there'd be no barren among your people, male or female, that there would be no miscarriages. I bind these spirits in the name of... I bind the spirits of spontaneous miscarriage and barrenness in the name of Jesus Christ. Go in the name of Jesus. Go. I break the curse of the closed womb. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise you, Lord Jesus. I bind the spirits of endometriosis in the name of Jesus Christ. I break its authority. Go! Go in endometriosis. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind you. I break your authority. I speak healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Go! 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 I break all the curses of colitis in the name of Jesus. All the curses of all the irises. In the name of Jesus, Crohn's disease, go. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise and bless and glorify you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All cancer spirits now, go. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I bind the spirits of unbelief now. I bind the spirit of unbelief and witchcraft mind control. I speak to unbelief and witchcraft mind control, and I isolate you. You control no power or authority to any other spirit. I bind you, I break your authority, and I command you to leave God's people now. In the name of Jesus, be gone. I break the power of the little girl spirit, the spirit of the little girl. I see her, and I break her power... Daddy's little girl, I break your power. I break your power in the name of Jesus Christ. I break your power in the name of Jesus. Daddy's little girl, I break it. You cannot keep this person little anymore. In the name of Jesus, I break your power, Bolivia. Command you to go, Bolivia. In the name of Jesus, I break your power, Bolivia. I break your power, Pershing. I bind you and command you to be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. I break the power of the little girl in the name of Jesus. Thank you for it, Lord God. Praise your holy name, Lord. We praise you and bless you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise your name, Lord God. Touch your people, Lord God. Touch your people now in the name of Jesus. Praise you and bless you, Lord God. Thank you for it, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And the power of diabetes. Diabetes. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. I break the power of diabetes in the name of Jesus. Thank you for it, Lord God. Oh, God, let your power come down, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, and touch your people. Lord, I release the Father's love, the love of the Father to come down now. Praise you, Lord God, the unqualified love of the Father, Lord God. Touch your people and set them free, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Touch your people and set them free from rejection, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, of being unloved, in the name of Jesus. 
Praise you. Let the Lord of the Father come down. The healing balm of Gilead. Praise your name, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God. Praise your name. Praise your name, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. I bind the religious spirits, spirits of religiosity. I bind the spirits of denominational spirits. I bind the necromancy spirits, the spirits of necromancy. I bind the spirits in the name of Jesus. All the spirits of idolatry, Lord. Those who worship foreign gods. Those who worship dead people. I bind those spirits of necromancy. Come out, Queen of Heaven. Come out, Queen of Heaven. I bind you, Queen of Heaven. Come loose in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind the break the power of the novena. In the name of Jesus. Turn them loose, Queen of Heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ. Turn them loose. Come out. 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 I break all the curses ever spoken against them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I break all the Indian curses that have ever been spoken. In the name of Jesus Christ. I break the curse of the Thunderbird. In the name of Jesus. The Pony Bird. In the name of Jesus. I break the curse. In the name of Jesus. Come out, Pony Bird. Come out. Come out. You can't lead them anymore. The Holy Spirit will lead them. Come out, Peony Bird. In the name of Jesus. Come out, Thunderbird. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. I break the curse of the sacred rattlesnake. Come out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. In the name of Jesus. The rattlesnake doesn't live on the hill of life. Praise you, Lord. Jesus Christ is the hill of life. Will lead us to the tree of life. Come out. I break the curse of the rattlesnake. In the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. All of you. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All Indian curses, Lord. All Indian curses, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. Come out. All the old witchcraft curses, Lord God. All the voodoo curses. All the roots. I break all the roots and all the voodoo curses. In the name of Jesus. Come out. I break the curse of San Daniel. In the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. The Husakata and Casadio. In the name of Jesus. Come out of them. In the name of Jesus Christ. I break your curses. Praise your name, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Loose these people, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. I thank you and I praise you and I bless you and I glorify you, Lord God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. All God's folks said, Amen. Praise the Lord. Everybody hold up their hands now. Lord, let your healing grace come down. Let your healing grace come down. Fill these vessels. Let your love come down, Lord God. Fill them and float out all these loose demons, Lord. All these loose demons, send the war angels down and gather them all up and haul them out to the pit, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we bind them all, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God. We bind all the Alzheimer's diseases, Lord. All in forgetfulness in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise your name. Let your power come down, Lord God. Let your glory come down. People stand up. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.